All right, back with the 550 again. So I just kind of wanted to go through super quick and just kind of give my two cents on the engine alignment. Someone has a good video out there, and I just figured I would throw up a video because I, it did take me a while to actually get it done. It took about five hours of messing with it to finally get it to the right alignment. So I just wanted to throw a video up on here to uh, clear that up. So there is a video of the Superjet, Hamilton's video, and when he aligns the motor, he has the coupler out. But on the 550, it doesn't actually have the room to slide the engine forward and then get your coupler in there and then slide it back. You have to take the motor back off of the engine mounts and that messes up your alignment so you got to do it with the coupler in on the 550 rather than out and then put it in after with the super jet so coupler in and then you want to take uh, your socket here and as you you just want to be able to roll it around it's probably really hard to see because everything is packed in here but so you just want to roll it around, see, then you can check the bottom gap with a mirror. And if it teeters at all, that means that you're going to be, you're off of alignment. And if it sits completely flat, then your, uh, your alignment's good there. So to, to get it into alignment, you're going to just either add or take away shims from each corner of the motor. And I didn't, it, mine only had, I think, three shims. I just had uh, a shim there there and on the back and then it didn't even have one in the the front here this one so i didn't really have any shims to mess with so when i dropped it in it was all out of whack out of alignment and so i just went up to harbor freight and got the shim box there they have a box of all the shims that you'll need a bunch of different sizes and stuff they're a little bit smaller than the stock ones so it's a little bit harder to grab them if you need to pull them out later but they worked and they were right there. They were like $7. So I picked those up, shimmed away, got it to a fairly, or a, I mean a very good alignment. Checked it around with my socket. Everything seemed to be in perfect alignment. So uh, I threw in the, you want the bolts to be in but loose. Tighten the bolts all the way back down and then after I tightened them, it seemed it was a little bit out of, uh, a little bit out of alignment just in one spot. So I figured the coupler is enough to kind of absorb anything else because like a half of a millimeter isn't, isn't going to be that big of a deal in the whole drive line. So um, I was pretty careful. So just, you know, when you're done tightening it, make sure you check it one more time. And if, it's, if it seems off in any more than one place or by any substantial amount, definitely loosen it again. And the other danger with these stock mounts is they're actually held together with like a glue. And a lot of times when you pull them out the first time, they will break and they won't be any good anymore. Luckily, mine did not do that, but I'm going to have a set of Roz. Uh, Roz Products makes mounts that are like a poly mount that's a one piece. No glue, so they're really, really durable mounts. So I am going to be ordering a set of those. And just to have on hand because if I have to do anything and a mount breaks then you're kind of out of luck until you can get more mounts in and when I when I go or when, I like to have a lot of extra parts on hand just so that when I do have issues it's super easy to just swap in parts that I already have laying around so and then they also have the uh, these thick washers here they have a washer I think it's like five dollars for each washer so 20 bucks for four of them and they actually have teeth on them so that when you tighten it in, it bites into the bed plate and really makes sure that those uh, those mounts don't come loose. So a pretty cool thing. I'm definitely going to be getting a set of them. I've just been uh, picking up other, other parts that I want for this. And then also we've got a little bit of uh, another, another jet ski in the works right now that I'll be going over in the future. So... That's kind of the situation with the engine alignment. So just make sure you get some shims, uh, bolts in loose, and then just align away, slide it back and forth, add shims to each side. I just, like I said, it took me five hours of messing with it to get it to where it was at good alignment. So uh, just take your time, make sure that it's done right. 
and hopefully you won't have to pull it apart again. And after you ride it for the first time, keep I like to keep the um I like to keep the shield off of it. So here's my shield right here. I'm going to put it back on eventually, it, which is going to be a pain because I have so much crap in here now. But leave that off because you want to be able to, after you ride, just put your hand in there. Be careful because if it is out of alignment, it's going to be hot. So if you touch this and it's sizzling water or it's very hot, you know that you're out of alignment. You're getting friction somewhere and you definitely want to look into that because that'll put a lot of extra wear on the bearings and then you're going to be doing your bearing housing and pulling out the drive shaft and it's a big mess so just make sure that your engine's in good alignment leave the shield off if you want that way you can test it out with the, your hand make sure you know drip some water on it make sure that's not getting too hot and that should be good to go if uh, if it's not getting too hot or anything and you check it with the socket and it's all in alignment it should be good to go and that's it for today.